today is all about um, is bringing research to practice and back. Uh, one of my goals as an academic is to influence transportation policy uh, and to influence uh, the, the practice of transportation planning. Uh, and as a researcher with UCI, one of our missions is to do exactly that, is to bring knowledge from research uh, to practice uh, and back. And one of the ways we do this is through active participation in, in European projects, um, such as Cycle Walk. And on Cycle Walk, we are, um, Urban Cycling Institute is, uh, is the advisory partner, so a lot of these projects, we are the sole um, academic uh, partner. As with, uh, as with Cycle Walk, and we not only provide knowledge and expertise and uh, um, uh, the technical um, and academic um, debates and, and knowledge around cycling, but also how it's all interconnected to other things like land use, uh, social um, aspects, um, organizational governance, um, and, um, and with also partners from Delft, um, Eindhoven, and um, around, the, around the country. So um, that's just a little short background. So as Sebastian said, one of the main, the main methodology for, uh, for this interregional learning was uh, study visits, study tours, excursions. Uh, and of course, for cycling and walking, being, uh, having that experiential learning process was, uh, is very valuable, um, or, or so it seems. Um, so the starting point is all too familiar for, for this project and also cities around the world. That, these regions are experiencing uh, problems and uh, that cannot be solved with a single solution or a single person or a single agency. Um, and this transition to what is called sustainable uh, mobility, yeah, Gianni, this is from your city, <laughs> Cagliari, um, is, is very urgent. There's an urgency around this. It's also very, um, very complex. Uh, at the same time, um, cities are struggling on an administrative level, on a technical uh, level, um, on a social level, and on a political level. Uh, the technical knowledge for designing, building, operating, delivering uh, networks of infrastructure, of cycling infrastructure, walking infrastructure, um, is very challenging. Uh, there's competing capital budgets for, uh, for this type of work, um, and that limits investment. Uh, there's also a difficulty around galvanizing political support uh, from elected leaders. Uh, and then on top of that, there's a skeptical public who, uh, like all humans, gravitate towards rituals and habits. Uh, and of course, this has been couched in a, in a car-based, car-dominant um, uh, lifestyle and an environment that, uh, that reflects that. Um, these are all photos from our, from our study visits in each of these areas. So each of these regions are, are struggling with all of these aspects. Uh, so one way to deal with this complexity, it seems, uh, is to learn from other cities, to, uh, to firsthand gain that experience of successful uh, policies um, and practices. And this is not something new. It, there's a long tradition of academic debate around, um, around policy learning. Um, around policy transfer, uh, and then new upcoming is this idea of policy tourism. And these are all, these have been, tourism has been developed more recently, but the policy learning and transfer is from the 90s, and, uh, and they both sort of emerged at the same time. Policy learning uh, has been in, from fields like geography, um, and political science especially, um, and then upcoming is, is sort of this transportation, a small but growing um, transportation niche around this, these ideas. And, and policy learning really is very conceptual based, a lot of case studies um, uh, reflecting the, the changes in perception, the changes in values uh, over a long period of time, um, mostly around elected leaders and, um, and, and influential decision makers. Um, and this is a very dynamic uh, theory so it engages in these emergent issues around learning. Uh, whereas policy transfer, which was developed around the same time, is much more of this traditional linear um, uh, framework, it's seven nice, neat seven steps, that starts with something like this, a, uh, a study visit of, of um, sort of, you know, just decision makers or technical staff, 
observing riding a bicycle, and then it ends in them sort of stealing this, this policy and then implementing it uh, in their home context. Um, there's a lot of debate around this that, that policy transfer doesn't happen. Of course, you can't just copy and paste, um, although some people are, are big proponents of this. Uh, and especially in transportation, which is a field that gravitates towards these, uh, this you know, technical, rational, orthodox uh, views of, um, of getting from A to B, really likes this policy transfer um, idea that uh, we should analyze policy uh, implementation in these nice, neat, neat steps. Uh, but so it's surprising then in transportation research that um, remarkably little is understood about the precise role of learning from elsewhere because no studies have thoroughly linked policy outcomes to learning. And these are some of the, uh, some of the greatest researchers right now in policy transfer and transportation. But, uh, but I would argue that perhaps the goal of policy learning um, is not policy implementation at all, and maybe we need to disentangle these ideas of policy learning and learning. Uh, because what we see in a lot of these study visits is something beyond uh, stealing policies or borrowing policies. We see a lot of dynamic interaction, rich experiences. We see things like um, communication, people talking to each other, people experiencing uh, riding a bicycle, which is something that uh, at least folks in, in cycle walk uh, don't normally experience in their hometown. And also other research has confirmed that implementation failure or, or a, a, after an attempt of policy transfer, that failure uh, suggests larger institutional barriers, right? The failure doesn't mean that nobody learned. I think these individuals and as a group still learned. But, um, but failure means maybe that there's uh, larger things at work like, uh, like competing organizational cultures, uh, bureaucracies that are hampering um, agility and flexibility and innovation processes. Um, and that has resulted in a lack of coordination. So uh, if we disentangle learning, which has always been conceptualized as something dynamic, something emergent as a social process, then maybe we can understand policy transfer a little bit better. Um, so I, I um, would argue that uh, these other mechanisms that we know from the uh, fields like business, uh, from fields like human resources, organizational learning, education, psychology, all these other fields um, have shown that that mechanisms like relationships, communication systems, available resources on an organizational level, a bureaucratic level, leadership and support, these all foster uh, learning and innovation. And so instead of looking at a, uh, a study visit like this as just a way um, to, uh, to, to learn about a policy, maybe we should see it as a way to build capacity. Uh, and, and to build these other deeper mechanisms that then uh, can afford uh, uh, the foundation of, uh, of a good governance structure.